Hello everyone, in this video we're going to teach you step by step how to solve non-right angle triangles. This means that if we have a minimal amount of data, we will be able to calculate all the unknown sides and angles of the triangle. If we want to do this, we're going to need the law of sines and the law of cosines. In the following part of the video, we're going to repeat these rules. The law of sines is the relationship between the sides and angles of non-right angled triangles. It states that the ratio of the length of a side of a triangle to the sine of the angle opposite to that side is the same for all sides and angles in a given triangle. The law of sines is also written as a over sine alpha equals b over sine Beta equals C over sine comma. You can see a triangle with sides A, B and C and angles alpha, beta and gamma, which correspond to the lengths directly opposite. The law of cosines says that if we know the length of two sides and the measure of the angle between them, we can calculate the length of the third side. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine alpha. We are going to need the law of sines and the law of cosines to solve this problem. Sarah and Yasin are curious. They want to know the length of this castle. The castle is surrounded by water, so they use a theodolite to do the following measurements. Calculate the length of this castle accurate to 1 cm. We have a number of data and we have a number of unknown lengths and angles. There are multiple ways to solve this problem and we can use trial and error. We try some formulas until we find the answer, but this can take a long time. It's more convenient to use a step-by-step -step plan. In the next part, we will solve all kinds of triangles using trigonometry. This means that we can calculate all the different lengths and angles of the triangle by using the law of sine and the law of cosine, also known as the sine rule and the cosine rule. Remember that when we have an angle of 90 degrees, we can already find all the missing angles and lengths using Pythagoras combined with all the formulas of the sine and the cosine we already saw. In this step-by-step -step plan, you'll learn to solve all triangles, so not only the right-angle triangles. When using Pythagoras, we only use the one formula, a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Now we will use the sine and cosine rule to solve all kinds of triangles. We will also use other math properties you already know like the common property that all three interior angles add up to 180 degrees in a triangle. Or the property that tells us that when adjacent angles together form a straight angle, they both will add up to 180 degrees in total. Let's say we use this triangle over here and we have to solve the length of side A. We can only solve this length if we've got other information about the angles or sides in the triangle over here. The information that will be given in this exercise will tell us if we need to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Here's an example. Imagine the length of side B is 5 meters. Then what is the length of side A? As you are probably thinking right now, that is indeed impossible to calculate. We obviously need more information to solve this problem. But how many elements do we at least need? So what is the minimum of elements we need? The answer to this question is not really that simple. And we will use the triangle congruence theorems you already saw. Do you remember them? Here you can find the triangle congruence theorems listed up. These triangle congruence theorems will show us that the triangle is solvable. This means there's only one solution possible. 
The first triangle congruence theorem that we will discuss is side, side, side. Now if you look at the two formulas on the si of the sine rule and the cosine rule, which formula will you use to solve this triangle? Exactly, the cosine rule. As you can see, we only got one unknown letter here. So we can solve this equation easily. After we transform the formula, we can calculate the angle we were searching for. Also keep in mind, I only have the cosine formula with a squared on the left side in this equation. There are two more formulas with b squared and c squared on the left side that you can use to find the other angles. Try and calculate this on your own. Just remember, when you have the triangle congruence theorem side, 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 you can always solve the whole triangle with the cosine rule. Side, angle, side, side, angle, side is also a, a triangle congruence theorem. Which formula will you use here to solve the triangle? Exactly. Also the cosine rule. We can find the last side length without even transforming the formula. After that, so after that, you can use the cosine rule yet again to solve the other angles. So remember, when we got the side angle side triangle congruence theorem, you can use the cosine rune rule to solve this triangle. Angle side angle is the next triangle congruence theorem. Which formula will we use now? There are two unknown letters if we use the cosine rule, so we can't use this formula. So that means we have to use the sine rule, right? But there are also two unknown letters. What do we do now? If you, if you use the left equation, we got two unknown letters, but also when we use the right one, we got two unknown letters. So what do we do now? If you remembered what I said earlier, you know we sometimes have to use math properties to solve different triangles. Here we can use a math property that says that the three interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. We already know two angles, so we can easily calculate the third angle. After this, we can use the sine rule and eventually we can solve the entire triangle. So remember, when we got the angle side angle, the angle side angle congruence theorem, we always calculate the third angle by using the math property that says that all interior angles add up to 180 degrees. And after that, we use the sine rule to solve the entire triangle. Eventually, there is a triangle congruence theorem, angle, angle, side, like this, angle, angle, side. Here we can easily see that we can use a sine rule to calculate a second length. At the same time, we can also calculate a third angle using the same math property that says that all interior angles add up to 180 degrees. And after this you can calculate the last length by using the sine rule yet again. So um, pay attention. If you are making exercises, make sure you only calculate the necessary angles and lengths. Most of the time you don't have to calculate everything to find your answer. But didn't we forget something? Aren't there five congruence theorems? HL in a right angle triangle is also a congruence theorem, isn't it? But I already gave the answer away. Because if we have a right angle triangle, we can just use Pythagoras combined with a sine and cosine of angles to solve the entire triangle. If you want, you can also use this co the cosine rule to calculate the whole triangle. You should try this and explain why we get the same outcome when using Pythagoras. Also, sometimes 
a non-triangle congruence theorem is given, like side side angle, like this side side angle. But we see this effort, we see this as a different kind of exercise with a different step-by-step -step plan. So we won't discuss this in this video. I also made a summary about the step-by-step -step plan. So now you have all the information to solve all different kind of triangles. You can use this summary that will help you along the way. It is a summary of what we just saw. I recommend you to print this and use it while making exercises. But remember that you can't use the summary when making a test or exam in class. Its purpose is to help you during exercises like the next one. So, in this part of the video, we are going to solve the next math problem. Sarah and Yasin are curious to how wide the castle is. Because of the water that surrounds the castle, they will use this theodolite to measure its width. Calculate this width of the castle accurately to 1 cm. So, what exactly is a theodolite? You can see one in the picture here, and it's commonly used to measure something from a distance. Before we start solving the map problem, you have to got to ask yourself what exactly do I need to calculate? In this problem you need to calculate the width of the castle, also known as a line segment DC. But how exactly will I calculate the length of this line segments? As you probably noticed, we are working with all different kinds of triangles where some lengths and angles are given. Now we just need to know in what triangle we need to work to find the length of DC. We can find different kinds of triangles where this line, line segment is a part of. DCB is such a triangle, but so are DCA and DCN, the intersection of AC and DB. For this exercise, we work with the triangle DCA. Why do you ask? Well, if you look closely, we can see we already got some information about this triangle. If you use the middle triangle, we have to calculate way more in this cost times. It is, it is important to work efficiently. If you work with triangle ABC, that's also perfectly fine. But for now, we will use triangle DCE. As you can see, we can calculate the angle of DAC here quickly by subtracting 110 degrees by 25 degrees but obviously we still don't have enough information to calculate the length of dc remember in the previous part of this video we learned we can solve any triangle when a tri triangle congruence theorem is given one angle is already given so if you look at the summary as you are printed we can use the triangle congruence theorem side angle side so what size do we need to calculate? Exactly, the line segment AD and the line segment AC. But how will we solve the length of AD? If you look closely in triangle DAB, we already got two angles given. And also a side. This gives us the congruence theorem angle side angle so we can easily calculate the whole triangle DEB if you want if you look at the summary printed you see that with the sign rule we can calculate the length of DA for triangle ABC we use the same congruence theorem angle side angle as before with this information we can solve the whole triangle again if you want but remember to also be efficient so we can calculate the length of EC with the sign rule. So in the last step, we will work in triangle DCA. Now we know the length of the side DA, the angle A, and also the length of side AC. We will use the congruence theorem side angle side to eventually calculate the length of DC. Remember, if you find this hard to follow, make sure to use the summary scheme you've been given earlier. So let's get into it. First, we are going to solve the length of DA in triangle DAB. 
what is already given in this triangle. The angle of A is 110 degrees, the angle of B is 30 degrees, and the length of AB is 25. If you look at the summary, you can see we already solved the third angle of this triangle by using the MAT property that says all interior angles of a triangle add up to 100, 180 degrees. By using your quick math skills, we know angle D is equal to 40 degrees. But now we will calculate the length of AD, because that is being asked. We can see the congruence theorem angle side angle is given, so according to our summary, we will use the sine rule, as you can see on the screen. If we apply this rule specifically in our triangle, we become the next equation. This equation tells us the ratio of AB to the sine of the angle D is equal to AD to the sine of the angle B. After, transformation this after transforming this equation, we can easily solve the length of AD. If we fill in all the known sides and angles, which you can see in green here, we become the next equation. The length of AD will be equal to 25 times the sine of 30 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees, which is equal to 19.4465. Then, for the next part, we will go to triangle ABC to solve the length of AC. What is already given in this triangle? Exactly. Angle A is 25 degrees, angle B is 130 degrees, and the length of side AB is equal to 25. As you can see, we already know two out of three angles of the triangle, so what map property will you use to solve the third angle? Exactly. The map property that says that all interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. After using your quick math skills, you know angle C is 25 degrees. We need to calculate the length of AC. How will you do this? What congruence term do you see? Indeed, angle, side, angle. So if you look at your summary, you know we have to got to use sine rule once again. If we apply this rule specifically in a triangle, we become the next equation. This equation tells us the ratio of AC to the sine of angle B is equal to AB to the sine of angle C. If we, we know we need to calculate the length of AB, so after transforming the equation, we obtain the following solution. If we insert all the given information, B is equal to 130 degrees, C is equal to 25 degrees, and the length of AB is equal to 25, we will get the following equation. If you calculate this with your calculator, you will see that the length of AC is equal to 45.3154. Now that we calculated both lengths of the line segments AD and AC, we can now work with triangle ADC. Now what information about this triangle do we have? We know the length of AD is equal to 19.4465. This was already calculated. The angle of A is equal to 85 degrees. We have to subtract 110 degrees by 25 degrees in the beginning of the exercise. And we also know the length of this line segment AC is equal to 45.3154. What do we need to calculate again? Calculate again. We need to find the length of line segment DC. How would you calculate it? What congruence theorem do we have here? Indeed, side, angle, side. So if you look at your summary, we you see we have got to use the cosine rule here. Here you can see the cosine rule in symbols. If we apply this rule specifically in our triangle, we become the next equation. This equation tells us that the length of DC squared is equal to the square of the length of AC added up to the square of length of AD minus 2 times the length of AC 
times the length of AD times the cosine of angle A. If we fill in all the information we have been given, we find that the length of DC squared is equal to 45.3154 squared added up to 19.4465 squared minus 2 times 45.354 times 19.4465 times the cosine of 85 degrees. If you use your calculator, you will see that the length of DC squared is equal to 2278.0440. If we take the positive square root of this number, we can see that the length of DC is equal to 47.73. This also means that the width of the castle is 47.73 meters wide. Thank you for your attention.